You're watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. From Toronto, Ontario, I'm Samia Sayed. Welcome to the show. Now coming up is a conversation with Sister Sara Rana regarding a protest in Toronto to stand in solidarity with the Uyghur people. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. Service Ontario employees found involved in assisting auto thefts. London Police Board demands femicide to be added to criminal code. Online event to understand media needs of refugees and newcomers. Clashes between Jewish settlers and Palestinians near Ramallah. And now the details. A total of 28 people from Ontario and Saskatchewan, including several Service Ontario employees, have been charged by the police yesterday for fraudulent modification and sale of stolen vehicles. This comes after a police investigation since 2020 uncovered three auto theft criminal organizations operating mainly in Ontario. Stolen autos were resold after modifying their identification numbers. The investigation named Project Myra led to the recovery of 214 autos valued at more than $12 million. Local media report the police are saying that Service Ontario employees were allegedly assisting in the illegal registration of stolen autos. Five suspects are in police custody. The remaining suspects will appear before the courts in July and August. The London Police Services Board is asking the public for comments as it prepares to request the federal government to include femicide in the criminal code to address gender-based violence against women. Megan Walker, former executive director of the London Abused Women's Centre, is leading the initiative that was brought to light in May. Walker says to local media that currently there is no separate data available about violent crimes committed against women. According to a spokesperson of the Toronto Police Services Board, they might join the London Board after reviewing the initiative. The last day to provide input is July 31st. Media Technology Monitor and Refugee 613 are holding an online event showcasing their annual survey about how newcomers use media and technology. The session will enable policymakers and change agents to assess the media consumption patterns, language preferences, and diverse communication needs of all types of newcomers in Canada, from refugees to immigrants. Canadians will gain insight about how newcomer and resettlement organizations support newcomer communication needs after attending the seminar. The event will be held on August 3rd at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The free educational event can be attended by registering at eventbrite.com. Palestinian demonstrators clash with Israeli forces following a protest against settlement expansion in the village of El Mughreir, east of Ramallah, in the occupied West Bank. The Israeli army intervened with live fire as Israeli settlers and Palestinians began throwing rocks at each other. A 16-year-old Palestinian died of critical wounds sustained by these live bullets in the chest, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. At least 53 Palestinians have been killed since late March, mostly in the West Bank, including Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh, a Palestinian-American dual national who was covering an Israeli raid in Jenin. That's it for the news. Now, just a few months ago, the BBC released the Xinjiang Police Files, a cache with thousands of police photographs taken of Uyghurs between January and July 2018. Several thousands of them have a detained status recorded on their documents, while others are being held in re-education camps. These camps are reportedly laden with human rights abuses, including rape, torture, forced sterilization, and much more. But what is the international community doing about it? Moreover, what is Canada doing about it? Joining us now is Sister Sara Mohorana, one of the organizers of a protest in Toronto for the Oivers. Welcome, Sister Sara, and thank you so much for joining us today. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks for having me. Waalaikum assalam. Let's start off very broadly, Sister Sara. Can you tell us who the Oivar people are? So the Oivar people are a Turkic ethnic group in what we call East Turkestan, but China calls Xinjiang. Uh, it's in the Western Chinese region, and they have historically been there for thousands of years. Uh, and they're an ethnic group that are majority Muslim. Mm -hmm. Now, I mentioned some of the abuses already. However, it was very brief and does not even begin to capture the true horrors of what the Uyghur people are facing. 
With more detail then, why are international human rights organizations accusing China of committing genocide against Uyghurs? So this is for a number of reasons. The first is that systematically, over 1 million Uyghur Muslims are in concentration camps. This is an organized system where Uyghur and other Turkic ethnic groups, like I have a Kazakh friend who was actually in the camp as well. And in these camps, they are not only forced to denounce Islam, but they are forced to memorize songs that praise the CCP, the Chinese government, communist ideologies. They're forced to learn Mandarin. They're forced to denounce Islam and basically say that they are uh, servants to the communist ideology. Uh, they're not allowed to read Quran or pray. If they do, they are punished and tortured and interrogated and accused of being terrorists. Like my friend who was detained in the camp for over two years, She, when she was detained uh, at first, they saw a Quran in her house and accused her of terrorist ideology. And in the camp, she was continually interrogated and tortured for this. And so what we need to see is that this is a war on not only the Uyghur people, but it's them practicing Islam and they're being persecuted for their ethnicity because they are not the majority uh, ethnic group, which is Han Chinese. They are Turkic, which is not ch uh, Chinese ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Sister Sara, you are organizing a protest in Toronto for the Uyghurs. Can you tell us more about it? Yes. So this is a campaign with Stand for Uyghurs. This is happening in Australia and the UK. And this is a whole coalition of dozens, like over 50 Muslim organizations. It's a Muslim cause, a Muslim campaign. And it's to show that the Ummah stands in solidarity against all types of oppression, especially against the Uyghur brothers and sisters who are in these camps and are being persecuted. And so that's why we have imams and mosques and Islamic institutions and other groups from other ethnic groups that are majority Muslim, such as many Palestinians, who will be at these protests saying that they support the Uyghurs and stand in solidarity. Because there are many, many Muslim countries, Muslim leaders, and even Muslim institutions and organizations that deny the genocide. And so this is just a way to show that, look, we are not the people who deny the genocide. We are the ones that acknowledge it, and we need to do it, because that's in the sunnah, that's our duty. Mm -hmm. As you said, it's a very contested issue and problem. And with large events such as a protest, there's always some challenges associated with them. Can you tell us some challenges that you faced or the other organizers faced in organizing this protest? So I can speak forever about all the challenges that we have faced organizing the protest. But I think the largest one we faced is that people find this issue way too political. And the reason why that's a problematic thing to say is that we as Muslims, our identity is political. Alhamdulillah, we're from a plethora of different ethnicities. And just because speaking about something means that it might result in backlash doesn't mean that we should stay silent. And so a lot of the uh, institutions that we approached said, you know, this, our job as Islamic institutions or mosques is to be spiritual and we can't come and tell the mosque goers that this genocide is happening or we can't tell them to go to the protest because it's just too political that's not our job and so it makes you wonder what is our job because the persecution is not just happening in china it's happening in canada there are so many Uyghurs i know including myself i'm not Uyghur, but when i spoke out i lost my job because of it uh, as a, as a part-time teacher uh, there's persecution happening here against Muslims who speak out. Uyghurs are still Muslims. And in Canada, they face harassment. That's a type of Islamophobia. Islamophobia is not a monolith. There's different types. And so imams and Islamic institutions have a duty. And unfortunately, many are not available to speak or won't be compared to other regions. If you look at the UK, there are many imams. They have, alhamdulillah, over a dozen who will be speaking. For us, it was a hard time just to find five. So we will see what happens, but I will say that we need to do better and stand together mm -hmm. instead of saying it's too political. Mm -hmm. And what are some other ways in which protests or movements for or for, for Uyghur people are being censored? 
So, you know, we have a lot of online threats, people who are China, Chinese and Han, or even people who are Muslim, but not Uyghur, uh, saying that this is all Western propaganda, that it's a concoction from the West. And what they need to realize is that a lot of times the West does not have the best interest of Muslims. We've seen that. As a Pakistani myself, you know, we can see how the West has really done a lot of damage in Central and South Asia, in the Middle East. But that doesn't mean that it's a choice between Western propaganda or genocide deni uh, denying the genocide. We could see and we can criticize the West, but we can also acknowledge that there's a genocide happening. So what we've seen is people threatening to counter protest. We've actually had Chinese hackers hack into accounts that where we posted uh, solidarity with the Uyghurs. They hacked the account. They took the they took the uh, solidarity statement down. They've threatened, you know, to dox people, uh, mm -hmm. and they've basically accused us of, of being CIA uh, mouthpieces, saying we're being funded by them, which is absurd. But you know what? People think of different conspiracies to make them feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. We just need to remember that, you know, with everything that we do, we'll get the reward, inshallah. We mm -hmm. just need to have faith and stand together. Mm -hmm. And again, as you said, there are many people who contest that the Oyghurs are even facing a genocide. Uh, and these protests have been organized multiple times all across Canada. And I'm sure this is not the first protest in Toronto, actually, for the Oyghur people. But how does the turnout look every year then if there are so many people who don't stand for the cause? Unfortunately, the turnout is not good. Uh, there have been protests. We used to have a weekly protest. That had to stop because no one would show up at the Toronto ones except the Uyghur and the Jewish community. Uh, and that's unfortunate because when you have protests, you want people to come. Uh, and so we're hoping with this one, it will be the largest one, inshallah. We have a number of organizers who are helping behind the scenes. Uh, and I'm, I have hope that a lot of people will come out. We have different student groups who are supporting it as well. And we're continuing our outreach. And with th this effort, that means for years to come, hopefully the genocide won't still be happening in the future. But I'm saying in the future, I think it'll the, we have more education we have people who are more aware i've spoken with a number of human rights organizations who said the genocide isn't real but i had long phone calls explaining to them here's a different evidence and here are evidences that are not from western media this is evidence that's just raw da data you know satellite imagery is not a news outlet it's literally just imagery that shows mm -hmm. that the camps exist even the chinese government said we do have camps, but it's for re-education, it's for vocational reasons. So you just need to educate people and the turnout will continue to rise. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Sister Sarah. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. This was Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. That's all from our studios tonight. Make sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more Canadian Muslim content. And if you can, make sure to stop by the downtown Toronto to join the protest this weekend. Stay safe, everyone, and until next time.